أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وجاوزنا ببني إسرائيل البحر فأتوا على قوم يعكفون على أصنام لهم قالوا يا موسى جعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجهلون رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي فالحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم قران ويكلي موسى عليه السلام a great messenger of Allah was given a mission to deliver a message to two nations one to the to, to the people of the pharaoh in Egypt uh, him and his his progeny and at the same time he was supposed to lead his own people where he's from the Israelites and that first part of his legacy is in Egypt and the latter part of his legacy is when he escaped Egypt by Allah's help. When they escaped Egypt, they crossed the water. And this ayah that I want to share with you today is some things that happened after they crossed the water and one particular lesson that I find very powerful and very relevant for our times. So Allah says, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرِ We had the children of Israel cross the water. In other words, Allah is saying He is the one who allowed for that crossing to happen. Then he says, فَأَتَوْا عَلَىٰ قَوْمٍ يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ So they came upon a nation, so then now they've crossed the water, they're in the Sinai Desert, and now they came upon a nation that was sitting in great concentration before idols that they used to have. يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامٍ لَهُمْ Now, think about this. When we pray, when we make salah, we get really distracted. Boy, do we get distracted. You could, most, of, most of us pray even the shortest surah possible, like inna a'atainaka al kawthar, and we're still distracted. Forget about in Ramadan, you know, the Qadi is reciting like an entire juz, and you're standing behind him in prayer, and you're like, when is ruku coming? That's the only thing you're concentrating on, you know? But you'll notice people of other faiths, especially people of like, you know, religions in which there is a lot of imagery. Uh, you know, people can sit behind a statue of Jesus for like an hour. They can sit in a temple and look at a, stare at a, you know, at, a, at an idol. And they can just sit there in meditation for a long time. People can do yoga for an extensively long amount of time, the meditation portion of it. And so you wonder, man, these people have such great concentration. And when Muslims pray, they have no concentration. We, we, even we, we try so hard to get concentration and we can't get it. Now these people, the Israelites, they come ac across a nation and they're not just finding people that are worshipping idols, they find people that are sitting in front of idols and they're able to call يَعْكُفُونَ عَلَىٰ أَصْنَامِ They are in complete concentration, cutting everything else off before idols and they, they think to themselves, you know, these guys are onto something. I think their practices have some benefit. Maybe we should adopt some of these practices to help us develop concentration. So, Oh, fine, we still believe in one God. So they said to Musa alayhi salam, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَىٰ إِجْعَلْ لَنَا إِلَهًا كَمَا لَهُمْ آلِهَا Why don't you make a God for us? A, a, you know, even if you interpret it in the benefit of the doubt, why don't you make us a statue that represents God? When we look at it, we visualize it, it'll help us concentrate. Just like they have. Look at how they're able to accomplish this kind of concentration. Now the, the real, the secret behind this is, Shaitan wants these people to concentrate on their shirk. So he lets them go. And shaitan doesn't want you to concentrate on Allah, so he keeps distracting you. <laughs> so the fact that you keep getting distracted is an indication that shaitan is bothered by what you're doing. So you constantly get waswasa from him. But the people who are doing shirk, oh, they can concentrate for hours, man. No problem. No problem. He will not distract them. They are doing exactly what he was hoping they would do. And now you got caught up in the, the, the outwardly of it. Oh look, they're able to have concentration and we're not able to have concentration. You got caught up and they say, maybe we should adopt some of their practices. Why do I think this ayah has relevance to us? This ayah has relevance to us because, you know, in today's time, we always think about how Islam can operate in a modern context, right? The world has changed. It's not what it was 1400 years ago in a desert. Technology has changed. Society has changed. Language has changed. Everything around us has changed. Our lifestyles have changed. So why can't Islam keep up, you know? And we, we see some things that are happening nowadays around us, and we think maybe we should update the practices of Islam to meet the modern necessities of our time. And I tell you, especially when it comes to spirituality, especially when it comes to prayer, especially when it comes to our connection with Allah, there is no evolution possible. The best possible way to connect to Allah 
has already been given. Now as far as the application of laws are concerned, the application of Islamic laws, and understanding in a modern context what is and isn't permissible because circumstances have changed. Now that's an exercise for scholars to engage in, to, to, to really clearly identify for us, well this is clearly clearly wrong and this isn't because you know we are in circumstances now that didn't exist before so that obviously needs some kind of ijtihad. But this ayah is about spirituality. Spirituality will not evolve. Spirituality, the height of it has already been attained by what was given to Rasulullah sallallahu there will never be a better connection to Allah than Salat itself. So when we come into a modern world and we find that people can get a spiritual high off of attending a concert, or you know, just hours and hours and hours of listening to music, and they're like, man, I feel, I feel a connection when I listen to music. And they say, well, you know, Quran, I don't really understand it, but if, you, if I can just replace it with some music. And now, by the way, this video is not about a fatwa on music. It's a, it's a, it's, this is a video about when we start seeking alternatives. They wanted an alternative. It, it suits us. Look at these guys. They've figured something out that suits them better. And Musa's response so beautiful. He says, "Innakum qawmun tajhalun." You people, you are, you've become a group of people that are letting your whims, your emotions, get the best of you. You are people driven by your emotions. Because today, this, you're into this, so you want to mold Islam to fit it. Tomorrow you'll be into that, and you'll want to mold Islam into that. SubhanAllah. This is what you're going to be doing. You're not going to stick to one thing. This is why we have to stick with the principles of our religion. They're timeless. They really, really are timeless. And even though there are aspects of other, you know, uh, other practices or other social behaviors that you might find attractive, if, they don't, if they're not consistent with the teachings of Islam, it is an exercise in futility to try to say, maybe we should update our religion and make it fit better. You know, I met people a long time ago who said, you know, I find that I, I can concentrate much better when I pray sitting, uh, you know, because I attended a church and I was able to listen to a sermon for two hours and it was great. So I think we should have chairs in our mosque. So everybody sits in chairs and we should have the, you know, the podium. And the next thing will be, you know, we should have a maybe an, a giant organ and a piano up there too. and because you know the sing-alongs help because we can get you know <laughs> one thing after another and salat you know this up and down exercise I don't really understand what the point of it is we should just be able to listen to it and maybe we should just pray in English instead you know and that's all that should be good enough and we keep we'll keep saying well one more convenience one more convenience one more convenience before you know it Islam won't even be what was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so there are some things that are timeless that have survived several cultures across the world so there's no reason they're not going to survive this one. And the moment we start thinking, no, 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 our situation is different. We are in a unique modern context that re requires rethinking of everything. Please, every generation thought that. Every generation thought that before us. You know, the world was a completely different place 800 years after Islam, and it is now 1400, 1500 years after Islam. So we shouldn't think along those lines. I pray that we're able to find and appreciate the timeless perfection of our religion, and we're not, we don't become like the people of the, this group of Banu Israel who t came to even Musa alayhi salam and said, hey, can you update this religion for us? Because we see some other practices that we're impressed with, subhanAllah. May Allah keep us committed to the purified and refined teachings of our religion. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum everyone. If you benefited from these reminders, please support Quran Weekly by clicking the link below.